Welcome back to Bits of an Artist Life. This is Sandy. This week, I thought we would do something a little different. You guys really enjoyed the books that I shared with you that I bought recently. Shared these in an art haul. I'll link that somewhere here and also in the description because I will not be mentioning these three amazing books in this video, but I do want to share with you guys some of my older books. Y'all like this, you wanted to know more about the some of my favorite books that I've had, so I wanted to do that. These three are in the favorites, like top favorites. So go back and watch that video if you wanna hear about Fairfield Porter. Ooh, I love this painting of his. The Mary Fedden and the David Hockney books. I share all of it in the other video. But in this video, Checking you guys. In this video, I may have too many. I, I, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes me to get through them. It was really hard to narrow them down, but my criteria was, did I say that correctly? Criteria? It's kind of hard to say. Criteria? R? R? Anyways, criteria. My, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, which ones do I go back to? Usually it's not for instruction. I don't have many like instructional books. I do not find instructional books to be good. For me, I'm a visual learner. I wanna see how somebody's holding the brush, how they're putting paint on. But I do go to books for inspiration and to remind myself, like if I'm stuck on a subject and thinking, how, do, how does somebody else render this? These are the people I go back to and look at their books. So let's just start. These are in no particular order of favorites. Just really, I put them in the stack of like smallest to biggest. The other thing, I do not know if these are still in print. Some of them may, some of them may not be. Some of them are done by just like an artist, you know, put some of their paintings in a book. The links that I can find, I'll put below, but some of them you may just have to reach out to the artist. And if they hear from enough of you guys, maybe they'll print another one if they aren't still in print. Who knows? All right, let's start with one of my favorite artists. Basically an artist who taught me so, 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 so much of what I know. Peggy Crow Roberts, she has this great little book. It's little, all right, head size. Uh, and it's just a book of her paintings. Yeah, and they are marvelous. I love Peggy and she does what I do with just multiple different types of subjects. Usually figure and still life are her main subjects, but she paints loose, she paints light and shadow and big juicy oil brush strokes and I just love her. And if she is still printing this book, you need to get your hands on one. I don't remember the price, but she does price things very reasonable. Must read. And that spoon. There's Peggy. So book number one on my recommendation inspiration list. I mean, that's what I should title this video. Number two. Number two. This is a new one to me. I'm trying to remember if I already mentioned this in an art haul. I don't think I did. In fact, maybe I forgot to even film it. Hmm. Yeah, I can think of, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know that I mentioned this. It is in, for the most part, another language. Oh no, it has English in here too. I'm not gonna even try to pronounce this guy's name. Rolf Schroeder, maybe? I don't know. It's a reproduction of his sketches for like maybe a year or something. Oh, a one hour wait. He would go down to the bus stop for an hour and sketch. And there's just a looseness. It's a really good one for me for reference for people and being loose. I love to see how he rendered them. How's he doing the eyes, the nose? There's tons of people that are just chopped off. Like they don't have any legs because, you know, they walked away. No legs, no legs, no legs. I think I've done that in some of my paintings. I'm like, who needs legs? <laughs> like he didn't do it and it worked. 
maybe I can do it and it will work. Yeah, it's just uh, a really good one. I really enjoyed this one and definitely one that I will reference. And I also love how he like layers. It's kind of like he's just, yeah, it's just sketches. I don't really know how to say it. I wish I could finish a sentence, but I can't. It's a good one. I don't think it was very expensive either. So there's that one. All right, number three. This is one I bought forever ago, like a long time ago. I would be surprised if this is still in print, but it could be. This was an artist early on I was really inspired by. Her name is Sarah Wimperis. I think that's who you say it. It's another book, uh, reproductions of her work. She works in watercolor and oil, but it's one early on that inspired me because of the looseness. I love these two paintings. I'm a little looser now than even this, but her work really inspired me and I really liked it. I don't go back to it as much now, but for a long time I did. Thought I'd put it in the stack because it's a good one. And I think you guys would like it. I love this one. This one's probably my favorite one. There's just something wonderful about that painting right there. This one I feel like is a little more serious. This is a book of Lilius Trotter's work. She is a Christian. She's dead now, but she was a Christian. And I read a biography of her. And in her story, it shares about how she was an artist and a guy that was like really big in the art world was like, you can be one of the top artists, but she was feeling called to the mission field. And it talked a lot about her struggle of this love of art but really being called to God's work and what that looks like and how she used her art in the mission field and it was just it was really really inspiring both times I read that book twice the biography and both times I was like oh I want to see her work the second time I did that the next day I got on something and there it was there was a book that had just come out of her work. Maybe it hadn't just come out, but it like popped up on something. And I was like, what? And I ordered it. I was like, I don't care the price. What's really great, it's got great quotes all throughout it. She just was a really wonderful woman at her heart. And she saw nature in a way that was beautiful. And she saw God all in it. And this is a book of her sketches. And most of them are there while she's on the mission field. I love it. And I love how two things that were loves of her life came together and how God honored that and used that even though her decision was really hard for her, a struggle to give up, you know, what was a, a possible art career, but she was still able to use her art in a way that was just beautiful. So I recommend this one too. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. Well done. Charles Reed. He was a huge inspiration to me in my early days. I have a lot of his books. I don't know if you guys know this. If you're new around here, you probably don't know this. I started off in watercolor. I was a watercolor artist for years and years and years and years. And some of my clients are like hardcore fans of my watercolor. They don't want any of the oil. They don't want any of the acrylic. They don't want, no, no, no. They want, go back to your watercolor. Well, Charles Reed was a huge inspiration. I found him early on. I was like, yes, yes, yes. That is how I want to paint. And I took one or two of his workshops. Anyways, my favorite book of his though is this one called Watercolor Secrets, an intimate look at the discoveries from a lifetime of painting. This is basically a book of his sketches. It's kind of even laid out like a sketchbook. And I've mentioned this book back in a video called how to paint loosely or something like that. I'll link it. It's a video that if you haven't seen that one of mine, I'd love for you to watch it because it really shares my heart of the way I approach painting. And I share some really great paintings from in here. 
and what really was huge in my journey of just let's just play and who cares if the guy that's in the sketch looks like he's in his underwear or has huge ears like it just makes it more interesting to look at I love this painting of his wife, Judith. So Charles was one of the first ones to, you know, just really kind of help me learn and lean into painting loose and enjoying the process. like what is that I mean it's figure but it's just so interesting in teaching me that a wonkiness to your work is actually really interesting it makes people want to look highly 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 recommend this book whether you're a watercolor artist or not I think you will get great inspiration this book still brings me laughs inspiration all the things Look at the way he's rendered those clouds and that tree. Hello. All right. This is a how to book. It's one of the, I guess really the only one I'm actually going to share on here. I don't reference this as much anymore. It's called Secret Strawing Heads by Alan, whoa, okay, let's see if I can pronounce this, Cray Vanger, I mean, who knows, but there it is. I don't reference this one anymore. No, no, take it back. If I was gonna do a workshop or teach a class on how to drawing heads, I would, I would reach back for this, but I think that I've used it enough now as reference that I probably don't have to reference it anymore, but he breaks down drawing the head really simply and then gets down to the nitty gritty of stuff too, where if you wanted to draw things very tight. The video I did a while back on how to draw the head, I referenced this and then kind of made it into my own. This is a good one. It's not a very big book, but I highly recommend that one also. Wow, that's something. That is something. Okay, and last but not least, I wonder if this video has gone so, so long. I hope not. Maude Lewis. This was an expensive book. Grady bought this for me and it's quite the splurge, I'm just gonna tell you. I don't really know why, but you know, some art books just aren't in print anymore. But he bought this and he reached out to a friend of ours who runs a private school and they were building their library and he was like, hey, would you like one of these? This is a pretty special book. And the guy said, yes, yeah, so Grady bought two of them. I was like, what? When I looked at the price, I was like, what, what, what? She had a bunch of cats and they were always named Fluffy. Every cat she had in the hysterical. But I was very thankful to have it. I was really into Maude Lewis at the time. I was watching everything on YouTube that I could find of her. There's some great documentaries. That's her. She was a folk artist and I just love her story. I love the fact that she was completely disabled by, I'm doing that because her hands are just crippled with rheumatoid arthritis. I can't imagine the kind of pain she lived with and they were very poor. She very well may not have had medication that helped her with that. But those of us that deal with health issues and pain, we know how painting like takes you away from that for a while. And I think about Maude sitting in her little corner of her itty bitty bitty house with her sardine cans and her paint that her husband would get from the leftover paint down at this like harbor from where the guys were painting the ships and she would paint. She had zero education in art and she couldn't get out and about, but she painted what she could see out her window. And I love that about her. And I love what seems like 
very simplistic paintings, but I'm just going to tell you, and I've talked about this before, you try to replicate some of these and it's not easy. She was a great artist. There's just a lot about her work that inspires me and makes me smile. This is a woman who painted a lot and learned from just doing it. And I find that very, very, very encouraging. You guys have been asking me, tell us more about your books. I just do not have a big art book collection. I'm working on it because I am finding that sometimes I just, I need, I need to sip up some inspiration. Sip up inspiration. I don't know why I just said that. That sounds so silly, but you know what I mean? You just kind of need to like get filled up. I don't know why I'm doing that either. Number two, I, I like having books like this of artists that I love the way they've rendered work. So if I'm stomped or finding that I'm painting too tight, I can go and look and say, how did they render that? Like this summer as I've been painting more outdoors and painting trees, I'm like, how are people rendering the trees? And I'm able to just go and be like, oh, okay, that's how. So that's why those things I think are helpful. Oh, I could, would, okay, let me know. I could do a video, I think it would be kind of short though, but I could do a video of some of my favorite reference books. Okay, I decided to go on and pull out a few of my reference books because I really don't have many that I use very often. There's really only two that I use, but there's one that I pulled out when I was looking through all these that I thought, oh, maybe I'll try to use this one. Let's start with the two that I use the most. All of these books or any of my reference books, I just get at a used bookstore. I really have fun kind of just pilfering through books and getting them at a really cheap price because I also don't want to be precious about them. I really don't want brand new nice books because they're in here in the studio. I usually have paint all over my hands so it works out really well to have used books. This one right here I use the most for my bird reference. I love it because it is illustrated but it's rendered in a way that's very detailed or detailed enough but not too detailed. I do tend to go back to the same birds over and over. So for some reason this has always been my go-to. And I wish I had the price tag on here, but I don't. But I know I got it for cheap because I never want to pay too much. So there's that one. The second one, probably in real life, or back in the day when it came out, was expensive. It's Reader's Digest, Birds, Their Life, Their Ways, Their World. Sounds very dramatic. Okay, I do have the price tag on this one. I paid $3, which probably felt like a lot for me at the time because I probably had several books that I bought. Here's all my sticky things for when I'm like sticking. Oh, okay, let's, let's get all this out of the way. I don't use this one as much, but I do love it. Let's see, let's look at some of the pages I have marked. I don't really know why I have that page marked because I would not ever paint those. I do like these birds, I reference those a lot. I mean, y'all probably don't really care what birds I reference, but I need to mark him because he's cute. So what I will do in my reference books is dog ear the pages. Again, another reason I like to just use used books because I can just mess them up. I think that's so cool. There's really great illustration in this book. And so I just dog ear them so I can just find a reference really quick if I need it. So that's that book. It's a nice big one. It's a honker and it's heavy. And then this book I got for 75 cents. Yes, that's my kind of price. I never use this book. But since I am painting flowers right now, I thought, well, I'll put, pull this out because it could be nice to just be able to look at some flowers and with my brush, like be looking at that flower and making the shape. Or sometimes I get stuck on the same types of leaf shape when I'm doing foliage and like a page like this would be really nice to look at. In fact, I'm getting quite inspired as I'm looking at that right there. Yes, and see, look at that. Dog-eared the page. Yeah, this is, okay, this is feeling inspiring. I'm glad I did this today. Yes, yes, yes. This is gonna be exciting. I am feeling very inspired. My tips for buying used books like this for reference, flip through them. Don't go crazy buying a bunch because you may find that you like illustrated stuff or you may find that you like photo books like this. I guess 
I do tend to go to the illustrated ones, but I'm finding this kind of stuff very inspiring. So buy maybe one of each and then decide which kind you like. So that way when you're at the bookstore, you can just decide really quickly. Look at those fun stars. Whoa, I'm definitely making those. You really don't need to buy a ton because I don't know if you're like me, you'll just go back to the same ones over and over. But this one is starting to get me quite excited. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that was good. Thanks. That was very helpful guys. I still want to see my reference books because now I'm all inspired. 75 cents, good price. Okay, I do have other reference books, but like I said, I just wanted to share my favorites and the ones that I mainly use, and that's it. Sorry, it's such a short list, but there it is. All right, guys, that's it. Did that take for forever? I hope not, and I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little different. It's a little different. I know, I know. Let me know in the comments which book seemed most exciting to you. Which one would you buy if you were going to buy one or if you are, if you did go look them up to purchase, whether they have them for sale or not. Let me know below because I'd love to know which of these books got you most excited. And let me know too if you like this type of video. I mean, I say that as though like what, you know, like I've got more of these to share and I don't really, these were definitely my top favorites. I never say this, but would you guys subscribe and hit the like button if you like this video or any of the other videos that you may watch while you're here because it helps me out. I'm trying so hard to get to 10,000 by the end of this year. That's my goal. 10,000 subscribers. Make it happen. Da, 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 da. Do I have anything else to say? Thank you guys. I do want to thank you guys. You guys leave me the kindest and most encouraging comments ever. It lets me know, like hearing from you guys lets me know, yes, to put the work in each week because there's a lot of work that goes into this. The majority of my week is given to you guys. Editing, filming, editing, more editing. It is given to you guys and I love it, but because it means so much to you guys, it really puts the fuel behind me. So thank you guys. Thank you for all your kind comments, for liking, subscribing, all the things. I will see you back here next week. Bye guys.